Hey you guys, Sherman614 here. I've had a few questions from people. Hey Sherman, what do you use to clean your knives? What are some tools you would recommend? Well, here's this video. Uh, usually when I'm going to clean and or take apart my knives, I will have uh, some paper towel set up around here. Uh, I didn't want to get waste a bunch of paper towel and just lay it down here and show you. But I do use paper towel and uh, Q-tips. But, you know, here again, I don't want to drag a bunch of Q-tips out here and just leave them in here because I just get them out of the bathroom as I need them. I don't store them with my supplies. So, first off, everybody, even if you don't regularly clean your knives, this is a tool I think you have to have. This is a Torx bit driver. This particular model is made by Husky. Great, great uh, brand of tools. They make excellent tools. I have a few Husky tools. My dad has a lot of Husky tools. They're just an excellent tool company. And uh, this is kind of a hard thing to find. I got this at a local Home Depot for, I believe, five, five, seven dollars. You now you can get a Kershaw brand one or a Benchmade brand one for about ten, not including shipping. So I'd recommend trying to find one of these. They they're great. Like I said, it's a Torx bit, which is, if you're not familiar, that is the standard, you know, screw that every knife is constructed with, ex with the exception of pinned construction knives, which is just a, a pin, like almost just like a rivet, shot through the handle holding it together. You cannot unscrew it. Or uh, Emerson, some Emerson knives, if not all of them, all the ones I've seen anyway, have a Phillips head and flathead screws constructing them, which is pretty nice. I really like that. I don't know why more knife companies don't start doing that, personally. So meanwhile, you have to stick with these tiny little screwdriver heads. This particular model, it comes with four different heads, four different attachments, but each one has two heads. So you have eight different sizes. I threw away the box. That was the only thing that showed the sizes of each head that came with it. So I'm not entirely sure. I've never come across a knife that one of these didn't fit. And it has that little ball in there that, you know, pushes in that what holds it in there. Very tight too. They don't it doesn't wiggle around inside of it a lot and it's easy to extract and put back in, but there's not a lot of twisting. Okay, you get that one which has smaller and bigger and then this cap it rotates which is nice because you can put that cap right there and you it helps you unscrew the knife or unscrew uh, the screws that are constructing the knife anyway that cap comes off and it houses hard to see hold on I have a flashlight and it houses the other heads all different sizes. You got really small ones right here. For I've had a few knives that took that size Torx bit. And you have other ones. Anyway, whoops. So they just store in there three of them. The fourth one goes right out here. So you got to have this that because that way you can adjust the pivot screw of your knife and adjust and that will help um, with blade play and blade deployment deployment speed I can't talk today <laughs> so everybody has to have that if you're going to start collecting knives or even if you have a few knives you should get this it to uh, maintain your knife so that you don't open your your blade one day and have it fly out <laughs> have your knife fall apart because uh, with a lot of use, those screws, even in the handle, will get loose, and they have they they will fall out. I've had mine fall out, which is why you can get this, the blue Loctite. I've heard a lot of people ask, "What's Loctite?" It's basically screw glue. <laughs> Going to get technical, I did a really crappy job cutting that tip off, so it all comes out in a big blob. It's just this blue gunk that you put on the threading of a screw, and then you screw it in to uh, the hole and it seals it 
the blue Loctite is what you want because it will securely glue that screw inside the hole. But you can still unscrew it with some tension. It will not come loose by itself. Trust me. It won't come loose by itself with Loctite on it, blue Loctite. Other stuff like green, and I believe they have a red Loctite, it's pretty much permanent. It's like liquid concrete. You're not going to get that screw out. So this is what you want because that way you'll be able to uh, remove the screws in the handle if you need to. Like I said, what I do is when I take apart the knife to clean it or take out the pivot screw, just all the screws are taken out. When I put it back together, before I put the screws in, I put Loctite on the threading of the screws and screw them in. And then it sets. But, the, but uh, with the blue Loctite, you're able to unscrew them if you want after this dries. Green Loctite, no, it will set. And I've, like I said, I believe red or something like that. Also, um, a fair of fine needle nose pliers. Uh, any needle nose pliers will really do. Um, I like these, they're made by Cobalt. But a lot of other companies will make these really uh, fine precision pliers, I guess you could call them. But I like these, these are good for getting little tiny screws out of the knife. Like if you have assisted opening knives, or knives that have a lot of internal parts, you're probably gonna appreciate this. Because where, where bigger fingers will not go, these will. And that'll really help, you know, get things out from inside your knife. Like, you wouldn't do this really, but just say that knife was taken apart and it was like an auto knife. That, that, that'll really uh, help you out. It also helps, I do not own one at this point in time. But it's nice to have one of those little, mag those little magnet dishes. So you can put the screws in and they won't get lost. My alternative at the moment, it, I also like to have a flashlight, just a little LED flashlight, it's with a flexible head, it's pretty cool, it has a little clip on the side, I have no idea who makes it, it's also a uh, laser pointer, so, why, I don't know, it's fun to tease the animals with, <laughs> but it has a magnetic base, which is pretty cool, so I'll use that, and I'll put the screws attached to that, and plus you can use a flashlight, so, you know, you can get down in there and look on inside the knife or you know whatever you obviously want to be working in some good lighting like I am here with this big lamp uh, I also like to have an eyeglass cleaning cloth so that I can uh, clean off that blade because I'm really anal about the the fingerprints on the knife blades you guys might not be there you know you won't need that then so that's totally cool that's just my thing that's what I use just regular, this is like, I forgot, Like this is like a microfiber cleaning cloth. It's pretty nice. Yeah, it came with my glasses. <laughs> so, I use that, like I said, I just don't like smudges on the blade. And also, a must-have WD-40. You can also use 3-in-1 oil. I prefer WD-40. Uh, this had a straw, a little straw. I lost it. I have no idea where it went. So what I'll do is I'll just spray it onto a Q-tip or a paper towel, like the edge of a paper towel, and I'll get it down in there where I need it. Basically, you'd use that. It's like I said, it's best to have the straw. <laughs> where if you have a new knife, or perhaps you have an old knife and it has some gunk caked up in there, in the uh, in the pivot area, what you'd want to do is you'd want to take the knife apart and wipe down all the surfaces, wipe down the tang of the blade, wipe down the washers that are on either side of the tang of that blade wipe down the inside scales, or the inside um, liners, wipe them off um, with some paper towel if you want to put some alcohol on there, some rubbing alcohol, or just water. I wouldn't advise water, I would use alcohol. And then dry it off really well. And then what you do is, is that after it's all clean, it's probably going to be pretty stiff opening even though there's no junk caked up in there because it has no lubrication. So that's when you'd spray uh, the WD-40 down there in that pivot area and give it a nice smooth open and close. You want to do this a few times after you spray it because it's the, the WD-40 is going to get it's going to get in there and it's going to settle and then by doing this it's going to be pushed out of the knife if you use a lot of it and then it's going to get on the handles and it's going to get on your hands and then well, there goes your knife on the floor. <laughs> 
So you just want to be wary of that after you use the WD-40. Don't do, don't go too crazy with it because it will overflow. And then you just you know use a rag and wipe it off, whatever. But I some knives um, such as um, OS eight or OS six or a four no not four not four twenty uh, D two is a tool it's a tool steel it's not a stainless steel. Those steels will rust really easily. You'll get little spots of rust here and there. So what you'd want to do if you're going to carry a knife regularly or maybe carry, put it in your tackle box, your glove compartment of your car, you'll want to take some WD-40 or 3-in-1 oil, spray a little bit on a paper towel or, or a dry cloth, and let's just say, you know, I sprayed it on there. You're going to want to very carefully very carefully, I cannot stress this enough guys, especially if you have a really sharp knife. Very carefully take that cloth and, and or paper towel and you know just rub that WD-40 into that blade. But when you get to the edge, wipe outward like, like so. Do not move around in circles in the edge and do not move this way. Outward. And when you get to here you can you know rub it. You know and you just want to do that. Like I said, a little goes a long way. You do not need much. And what that's going to do is that's going to coat your blade. And believe it or not, um, you know, that metal is porous. That WD-40 is eventually going to work its way into the metal, and it's going to seal it like a clear coat. And that's going to protect it against rust and all kinds of other uh, nasty things that want to get into your knife blade and harm it. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty good thing to do. Uh, you probably won't have to do that carrying it in your pocket that much. I would, and I do, because I carry my cold steel tie light all the time, and it's made of OS 8 steel, and it will get rust spots. So you gotta spray the blade. Even my knives that I store in my case, my big um, egg crate, uh, O-ring sealed, whatever, uh, knife case, I will wipe all my blades down with a coating of WD-40 just to uh, make sure they don't rust while they're in there. They probably won't ever, but you know, <laughs> I'm very anal about my knife care. So yeah, that's some of the things that I use. Uh, is all this necessary? No, it helps me and I think it would help you guys too. The bare, the bare essentials, you're gonna have to have a Torx bit driver or an Allen wrench, which will work the same. Um, I have one in my box, but you know, I think you guys know what an Allen wrench is. And same thing, it's just it's bent at a 90 degree angle. It's pretty good for, if you have a screw that will not come out, you get some good leverage, but this will do just fine and it's really cheap. Loctite, not necessary. I would highly recommend getting the blue Loctite. Small little bottle like this. Uh, yeah, thread locker. So, great stuff to have. Keeps your knives together. And the cloth isn't really necessary. I just do that because I like to clean my blades get the smudges off and you're gonna need lots of paper towel or not lots like two pieces but you know to wipe off all excess whatever you got going on there okay guys um, that was some of my knife care gear hope you guys enjoyed if you have any questions or comments on this video of course you know where to put them uh, be looking forward to it all right guys hope you enjoyed Sherman 614 peace